Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lansdowne High School. My name is Karen Blannard, and I am the executive director of school support that works directly with the three elementary schools that are joining us this evening. So a big welcome to Riverview Elementary, Lansdowne Elementary, and Baltimore Highlands Elementary. We do want to thank the principals, our teacher representatives, and our community members. A uh, big thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here with us this evening. So you'll be receiving a lot of information around this process, but it's really important for you to know up front that when we do a boundary study and we work through the process, we're really thinking about what's in the best interest of the Lansdowne community. And so that really includes all three schools because you're all very close to one another. And so as we build out scenarios and make decisions, I ask you to think about making those decisions based on the students we serve within the entire Lansdowne community area. So um, you will receive a lot of information this evening. You have your binders available to you. We will be uh, collecting information and having discussions throughout. It's really important for you to know that we want to hear your voice in this process. As a representative, your input is really invaluable to us. So I do want to um, introduce you to our community superintendent in Zone 4, and that's Dr. Penelope Martin-Knox. And I'm going to turn it over to Melissa Appler, who will be leading us through this process, and she will be introducing you to some of her team members this evening. Good evening, uh, my name is Melissa Appler. I'm with the Office of Strategic Planning with Baltimore County Public Schools. Our uh, office is here to support and guide you through this process. Uh, I wanna thank each of you for coming out tonight to our first meeting and, and tell you how much we look forward to working with you as we begin developing options and eventually a recommendation to take to the board. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to give an opportunity to actually go around. You're all going to be working with each other a lot over the next few months. So if you can uh, go around, we're going to introduce, if you can give your name and the school that you're with. My name is Brian Williams, the principal at Baltimore Highlands. Kelly Nyman, teacher at Riverview Elementary. Lakita Lance, parent, Riverview Elementary. Tiffany Lanahan, um, a parent of Lansdowne Elementary School. Stephen Price, I'm the principal at Lansdowne Elementary. Sarah Poist, I'm a parent of Riverview Elementary. Mary Maddox, principal of Riverview Elementary. Christina Umstead, parent, Baltimore Highlands Elementary. And Stockbridge, teacher, Baltimore Highlands Elementary. Amy Serjak, teacher, Lansdowne Elementary. Thank you. Um, also, I wanna make sure everybody, when they walked in today, they would have gotten a binder full of uh, information and uh, background report. There's also a PowerPoint in there that you can follow along with if you can't see everything up here or you have questions when you go home. Uh, there's a background report with all kinds of data, information, and maps in there. Each uh, week when you come back, you will receive another packet of information. You see you have a rather large binder and there's only a little bit of information in there right now. But by the end of the process, your binders will be full with all kinds of information to help guide you through this process. So this evening, uh, we're going to um, do an overview of the projects and tools available. We're going to actually do two exercises. One's an opportunity analysis where we're going to look at, um, you kind of go through your binder with all your information and look at, uh, identify and discuss with each other some of the uh, opportunities, limitations, challenges that you see um, being experts in the community that you see in this boundary change process. And then we're also going to do a planning block review exercise, which I'll explain a little bit more about uh, in a little bit. Tonight's goals, as I said, are to familiarize yourself with the background report. We're going to begin establishing um, and practicing norms of the committee engagement through our exercise, our opportunity analysis, and a planning block exercise. Um, and we're going to review the study planning block areas. 
Um, so a boundary, um, and a boundary is a line that defines a school attendance area. Why we're all here tonight is to establish uh, a new boundary for the Lansdowne Elementary School. It's guided by board policy and rule 1280. Um, it's driven by a, a community committee made up of principals, com uh, parents, and teachers. Uh, and uh, the objective, it's an ex objective examination of data, creation of options, everything that we provide here tonight, we want this process to be transparent, available to everyone. All of your information is provided, all this information is provided on the website, so if anybody in your community actually wants to create uh, a binder of their own, everything will be on. This uh, meeting tonight is live streamed, and then the video will also be provided and posted on our website, and it will also be translated uh, or um, subtitled in Spanish. So the committee, um, you're going to meet four times between September and November. Um, you're representatives of, representatives of the community, and you're going to work together and collaborate together to develop boundaries that are best for the community as a whole. Um, that's very important that we think about all the children and what's best for all the children in the community. We're asking you to suspend your parochial interest uh, when developing these boundaries. Uh, once you come up with um, a recommendation, you will um, take that to the community superintendent. Um, Dr. Martin Knox will take that to the board um, to move forward. They will then have a public hearing. The board will have a public hearing on that recommendation where anyone um, from the public can come and comment, give feedback on the recommended option before moving forward for adoption. So on page uh, four of your background report, uh, in your binders um, is the committee calendar. Uh, the meetings in green are your committee meetings. Um, the orange meeting is your public information session. So at this public information session, you'll take uh, several of the options that you develop and it will be more like a gallery walk where they will come in and they will review these, the options that you have put together and you'll be able to get feedback from the uh, community on those options so far. Um, meeting attendance is very important. Um, as you can see, we're a small committee, so m missing one or two people uh, is, is, um, is very, uh, you know, it's a huge impact, so it's very important. If you are not able to get to a meeting, please let us know. You will get reminder emails from me about a week ahead of time before every meeting. Just shoot me an email back letting me know if you can't come. If email is not the best way to communicate with you or not the easiest way, just talk to me after this and we can work something out that um, I can send information to you another way. Um, also in the process we have a consultant, a community engagement facilitator that's going to help guide us through the process, uh, Ms. Maleni Bell. Good evening everyone. Wow, that's some serious sound. So um, as, as Melissa said, my name is Melanie Bell, um, and I will be operating as a community, thank you, engagement um, specialist in this process. Um, I'm basically here to support you all um, and the process as you come and collaborate and also come to consensus, consensus to come up with a recommendation for the board. Um, a little bit of background information about me. I've been in education for about 17 years. Um, I started out as an ELA teacher. Um, I've done some instructional coaching, and for the past five years or so, I've been doing work with restorative practices, um, supporting school communities with um, bringing community building and also conflict resolution into schools. Um, so I'll be here throughout the process to answer any questions that you have, and again, just to be of, of support. Um, with that being said, um, because this is a collaborative process, um, these are the norms and, and expectations that we've laid out, so I just want to review them um, briefly. So the first one is just to, as we're working together, to be inclusive and just allow folks time to respond and think through um, the information when you're in conversation. Um, another point is just to allow wait time between, between responses. Um, we're asking that you spend adequate time consider, considering how each proposed change will impact every stakeholder. So you're using the boundary study guidelines as a lens to determine um, your suggested changes. 
Um, lastly, or second to last, if a conflict arises, just be mindful of your tone and your body language. It's helpful if you stay focused on yourself, so just using I statements and things like that um, so as to avoid blame or escalating conflict. Um, and then lastly, just expect that there may be non-closure. Because this is a process, there will be many questions um, that may come up in each session. It might be unanswered in the first, second, or third session, um, but we do really, um, we're really diligent about making sure that you have what you need. So sometimes it might be that you'll begin a conversation and it might not end in that session, but it might carry over into the next one. Um, so that's it. Any questions? Okay, thanks. I'm gonna turn it back over. Thank you. So just to talk a little bit about the Southwest area, um, as you know, uh, or you might, um, BCPS is in the midst of a $1.3 billion Schools for Our Future initiative that looks to um, modernize facilities and add capacity to go with our growing enrollment. Also accelerating air conditioning as uh, we need tonight in this hot room. <laughs> the, um, in the Southwest area, there was uh, five um, elementary school projects proposed. Four have been completed to date. Uh, Catonsville, Westtown, Westchester, and Relay just opened uh, this past school year. Lansdowne Elementary is scheduled to open in August of 2018 for the fifth project, elementary school relief project in this region. In uh, spring of 2016, BCPS completed a boundary study for the four schools that were already have already opened. There were 11 schools that participated in this process and they're listed in your um, handout. You can see that Lansdowne did participate. However, while all these schools participated in the process, not, boundaries were not changed for all of those schools. Um, earlier in 2017, the superintendent initiated a boundary change for Lansdowne Elementary School uh, and with an uh, effective school year for 2018-2019. So the following reasons are driving this need for the boundary change. Uh, reconstruction of Lansdowne uh, with uh, added seats. It's going to change from a school uh, capacity of 313 and increase to 709. With that added capacity is the reason for the boundary change. Lansdowne Elementary is currently 156% capacity as of, uh, this is a September 30th, 2016 enrollment count, um, and Baltimore Highlands is at 123%. So both schools are needing relief as they are overcrowded. The schools participating in this process, as you know, are Baltimore Highlands, Lansdowne, and Riverview. It's important to mention that some might ask why Relay and Hellthorpe are not also included in this process. These schools were included in the spring 2016 process, and many of the uh, children adjacent to the, uh, the, right on the boundary of Lansdowne Elementary had just moved schools um, this school year. So um, that boundary change took effect for the 17-18 school year, and we don't want to move children um, more than once. So the boundary study objectives uh, for this uh, process are we want to reduce overcrowding in the region. We want to create viable, successful boundaries to effectively utilize the added capacity at the schools at Lansdowne Elementary. And we want to support diversity among schools that reflects the community and the school system. Um, as we, in your back, as you begin developing uh, scenarios, you're going to get a lot of information and data that will help evaluate these when you start developing options. The data and information in there will help evaluate if these objectives are being met and compare the different options that you develop. Uh, Rule 1280 also has a number of considerations that they would like you to um, think about when you're developing and evaluating your options. Uh, there are no, uh, and you can recognize that there are, it's going to be difficult to make a boundary that addresses all of these considerations. So it will be important as you go through this to start thinking about what is important and what's best for all kids as you start looking at and thinking about these considerations. So maintaining the continuity of neighborhoods, maintaining or increasing the diversity among schools to reflect the diversity in the region of the school system as a whole, the impact of transportation and pedestrian patterns on students, minimizing the number of times a student um, changes schools, which is uh, what I just discussed with Relay and Hailthorpe, um, efficient use of capacity in the effective schools, 
long-term enrollment uh, and capacity trends and future capital projects that are planned in the area, uh, location of feeder pattern school boundaries and continuity of feeder patterns, and then phasing in changes by grade level for high schools, which this process is only focused on elementary schools, so we're not looking at middles or highs or, or considering those boundaries in this process. Um, some additional considerations to um, think about when you're looking at these are major um, geographic features like railroads and uh, major highways. When you're starting to think about walkability or neighborhoods um, to consider these. Um, also uh, another consideration that we um, look at is the elimination of satellite boundaries which are non-contiguous boundaries. There's some schools um, in Baltimore County that have these. Um, there are no satellites in this process. So in your packet tonight, you would have received a background report. Uh, the purpose of this background report is to provide uh, data and information and tools to help guide you and give you the knowledge that you need uh, to make uh, your options and help develop your options. Uh, it's also used, uh, it's important that we deliver a consistent uh, message to the community. Um, it's really important that we don't go out into the community. You're going to be in the grocery store. People are going to be asking you questions or you're out in the community. People are going to ask you questions to make sure that we don't um, speculate what's going to happen. You, this information's here for you to provide data and information and facts to your community uh, and because it is a data-driven process and we want to support that data-driven process and not speculate on what might happen. So in the background report, some key sections uh, that might be helpful for you. Um, the boundary study considerations, as you're developing your options, you're gonna, gonna wanna go back to these considerations from Rule 1280 to think about them when you start thinking about what blocks, uh, planning blocks you're going to move. Um, your timeline, so your meetings, most uh, all your meetings and your locations, all the meetings are happening here. Um, they're all 6 to 7.30, um, but the, it gives you a clear idea of the process, so when you're talking to the community, you can also um, reference that. Um, there, in Appendix A, there's school facility information and school enrollment, so there's some enrollment information, information on each facility, how old they are, what is their state rate of capacity, that type of information. Um, and then in Appendix B are your maps, which I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. So interpreting your maps, the first thing you want to do is look at the title. You're going to see in the title, it's going to tell you what you're looking at, which school you're looking at, and what data is being labeled. So there are maps that are labeled with the planning block numbers, the planning block IDs. There are maps that have um, the kid counts, um, K through five kid counts. Um, you're going to see your legend, the elementary schools are in a uh, red square, middle schools in a blue triangle. All this information is in there. I'm um, going in a little bit more about the planning blocks, the small areas, and examining student populations. So the map titles help clarify what you're looking at when you get into these planning block maps. You're going to notice when you start looking at these blocks, a planning block is used, they're in the black and white hatched boundaries. You're going to see them on the map. The planning blocks are used to as the building blocks to develop the options. So there's a planning block ID labeled in them. And then underneath are the number of K through five students currently attending that school. So uh, the children outside that attend the school from outside the boundary are not included in these counts. And pre-K, pre-kindergarten and pre-school students are not included in, in this um, count. But that information is provided also in your background report. But as you begin developing these options, it gives you a quick and easy way that you can think about oh, this block has 50 students, and if I move it, the impacts. You can start seeing the impacts of moving blocks um, between schools. In Appendix C, as interpreting um, is your live and attend data. So from here, you can see that across the top, it's your students that live in the boundary. So for Baltimore Highlands, 619 of their 635 students live in the Baltimore Highlands boundary and attend Baltimore Highlands. Then if you go across, you'll see that two students live, um, attend Baltimore Highlands, but live in the Lansdowne boundary. So if you total that across and look at that table, there's 16 students that attend Baltimore Highlands that live outside the boundary. 
And then it's the same for going down. So you can interpret where are students coming from, where are your out of boundary students that are still going to attend that school to start thinking about that. And we're available here. Um, you'll have staff walking around to help you interpret any of these maps or any of the information um, in, in these tables. So uh, there's a, the role of BCPS staff and leadership in this process is we're gonna provide you with data and information, all the statistics that you need and help guide you through this. We're, um, we're gonna update the superintendent as needed with um, how the process is going and where we are. Um, we're gonna ensure the policy and process are followed. We're gonna support avenues for community engagement through your public information session. Um, all of the information, like I said before, is available on the website. We're gonna provide access. We have a Spanish interpreter available coming to every single meeting. So um, if you have those, there's also on our website requests for translation. If anybody should need translation, they can, uh, they can request that information to their school. And we are really here just as objective participants here to help and answer any questions you have. So the committee communication, there are a few guide rules kind of for committee communication. The process is designed uh, that all the business of the committee is done in, um, conducted in the meetings. If committee members have questions, comments, they can, um, so between meetings, they can email us at boundarystudy at bcps.org or by contacting us at 443-809-4216. Uh, communication, um, communications received related to committee discussions and deliberations will be shared with everyone. So if you email us a question, we will share that question with all committee members. Uh, the public also is, um, this email address is also available to the public and there's a link to it on our website that they can also um, provide comments and questions uh, to us and we will provide that information with, to you as well. Every, um, between, before every boundary meeting, we'll send you out a link to those emails we've received to the public and they will be posted on the website. And they're posted a verbatim, you will get all the information that they send in. Between meetings, like I said, the main mode of communication is email. Uh, we will not share your committee email addresses with anyone. And uh, please do not sh share committee contact information with anybody. We're asking you not to do that as well. Um, all communications regarding the boundary study process are considered public information. So if you are emailing us for information, that information can be posted and is available to the public. We also, I was uh, talking, I've been talking a lot about the website. Uh, if you go to our main page on our website, there's a what's happening, it's in a blue box over to your left hand side. And underneath that, there's a construction and relief strategies and you can find the lands down boundary process and all the information under that uh, link. It's updated regularly. We try to have all of the information from this meeting provided within 24 hours of um, the next day. Um, and please remember as you go through this process to refer to your background report um, as your, and your considerations. Uh, now, be, we're gonna, um, before we get into our first exercise, I just wanna see if anyone has any questions so far. Okay, so our first exercise, Ms. Bell is going to uh, get us ready for. Okay, um, so what we wanna do is um, give you all time to, thank you, take a look at the data and also take a holistic, um, like a holistic look at the current boundary. So what we're gonna ask you to do is take a look at the current boundary and assess its current strengths, like what's working, um, look at the limitations of the boundary, and then look at the opportunities that are created by this process. Um, by, by shifting the boundary and also some of the challenges. So you'll work together and um, peruse through the data first and then work collaboratively to um, identify the strengths, limitations, opportunities, and challenges. Um, I think everybody is in their color groups, yeah? Blue and yellow, okay, great. Um, so 
What we'd like um, for you to do is to record your responses on the chart paper that's in front of you. And also what's important is any questions that come up, we're asking that you record them as well. You could put them on post-its and then stick it on the chart. Um, uh, whatever, whatever you decide, whatever works for you. Um, some of those questions might be answered tonight, but also some of those questions we'll take back with us and then perhaps answer the next time. Um, so what we're asking you to do, um, we're asking for um, folks to take roles. So we're asking that one person be the discussion guide. And so that person is just uh, responsible for monitoring the time and um, just making sure that everyone has equal access to voice, right? Um, we're asking that one or two people um, act as a reporter. So once we're done, we're gonna share out and kind of debrief um, what, what you um, brainstormed around. So we're asking for one person to be the, or two people to be the reporter. We're asking for a scribe, so someone to just to write down, um, you know, what the thoughts of the group were and are. And then lastly, a parking lot attendant. And so this is the person who would be in charge of writing down any questions that come up that aren't answered um, as we engage in this process, okay? Um, let me see if, what's next? Okay, yeah. So we're gonna take about um, 20 to 25 minutes to do this. I'll check back in maybe at 15 minutes, and then we'll also be around to answer any questions that you have. Before I um, give the mic back to Melissa, does anybody have any questions about it, what we're about to do? Okay, great. So we'll be around.
up anything? <coughs> if I have five more minutes, if they need it, we'll just check in. Do you think we're ready? Okay. I just want to um, check in. Um, I want to see if we're ready to go or if you need maybe like three more minutes or so. If you're ready to go, can you just hand? Is this group ready or you need a few more? Three minutes. All right. So we'll check back in in three minutes or get started in three minutes. Okay, um, so let's come back together. Um, we want to have kind of um, each group share um, what you all what you all said and what you recorded. Um, is this group ready to go first? Okay, great. So I'll pass my mic. The speaker. Oh, okay. Am I doing it? Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we as a group decided that some of our strengths were our natural boundaries. Um, the limited busing, most schools, especially Riverview, do not have buses at, um, at all at Riverview. Um, the walking zones we decided were strengths, but that can also fit under the limitations because you have so many kids that walk to school every day. And then the neighborhood identity we also labeled as a strength um, because there's so many diverse families that live in the communities that we have to accommodate everybody. Um, then we, under limitations, we also included the tightly compacted walk zones. Um, then for the future, we went over, for our opportunities, the increasing diverse population uh, and how we could decrease the portables that are outside of the buildings that also house classrooms and creating the equitable opportunities in the poverty or racial communities and the struggles that come along with that. And under challenges, we put our neighborhood identity, the transportation and how that could affect our walk zones and the change that will come when we eventually finish the boundaries. Thank you. Um, did anybody from the group have anything else they wanted to add? No? Okay, perfect. Thank you. So? Okay, we had a good discussion at our table. So um, some of the present strengths that we identified was um, 
at Riverview, um, all students are walkers, and at Baltimore Highlands, almost all of our students are. We have one neighborhood bus that goes to a section of our community. Um, in our schools, they're accessible to parents, so parents are able, if they have a, ch a, a sick child, they're able to walk to the school to um, be able to attend to what they need to do. Um, in our community, we um, have multiple families that are living together in our Highland Village area, so that's something that, um, that strong sense of family support is, is um, a positive, and there's, um, there's many generations that have lived in our communities um, that um, parents and grandparents have attended our schools as well. So some of the limitations that we see currently is the way um, Lansdowne Elementary School is zoned is very widespread. So whereas in the other two schools we're very walkable, it's very accessible. Um, our farm rates, um, we have um, ranged from 100% students on free and reduced to 78%. Uh, roughly, these are rough estimates, about 89% at Baltimore Highlands. Um, and we have a section that attends um, Lansdowne Elementary School on the Fifth Avenue area that is currently getting a uh, bus to school. Um, some opportunities for um, this future endeavor is we can eliminate and reduce overcrowding. Um, we can potentially reduce, Steve, help me with this. No. Um. <laughs> can you read it? Buses. Ah, okay, we could potentially reduce buses, um, some of the buses coming through our neighborhoods. Of course, now there'll be air conditioning for all, which is important. Um, and then we can really look at uh, the rebalance of the demographics within our community. Some of the challenges, um, we have a large um, population that will be leaving, potentially leaving Baltimore Highlands, um, and that impact will be great on our um, parents and our students. Um, and some of our kids who are used to walking to school now will have to take a bus. Um, getting parents on board and making sure that they feel welcomed in their new school environments, um, and just, just creating a, a new sense of community with our students and families. And kids' feelings. Thank you. And did anyone else in the group have anything they wanted to add? All right. So, um, you know, I just want to thank you for um, taking the time and really um, going through the data and asking really important questions. Um, you know, this was an opportunity for us to take like a bird's eye view so we know what's ahead of us um, as we move forward. So I want to thank you. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Ms. Epler. Thank you. Um, so we're going to go in right into our next exercise, which is a planning block exercise. And I'm sure during this process of coming up with your opportunities analysis, you've looked a lot at the maps, you've identified some areas that may, um, you know, to look at, and some of the planning blocks, you've looked at how they're divided. What we're asking you to do in this exercise is to take a look at the planning blocks and use your, your information, your knowledge of the neighborhoods, the community, and review these planning blocks and make recommendations if you think an area needs to be, a planning block needs to be modified, if they need to be put back, to, or two planning blocks need to be put together, reconfigured, this is your opportunity to do that. Um, and the ones that you're looking at right now uh, were put together, basically looking at neighborhood boundaries uh, and roadways. So this is your opportunity with your no local knowledge to go through and make those recommendations of how you would like those areas split. Yes. When we start to think about possible blocks that could move, when we talk about opening lands down, are we talking about opening at capacity? Are we talking about opening at slightly less in capacity, expecting a boost in enrollment because it's a new building? Um, are we shooting for that 705 number? That will determine, uh, be up to you. So what next meeting, when we come in, we will, you will be developing your own scenarios. You will, based on the planning blocks, if you change any, we will come back with repopulated planning blocks with uh, the numbers in them. And you will decide, you will, in a dynamic, um, 
kind of um, Excel like uh, model, you'll be able to move planning blocks and see how that impacts each area. So does it go to 105 or 110? You'll be able to swap ones in and out and see the impact on those uh, changes. And you'll be able to recommend, and you can, um, at that meeting, you'll be able to come up with, you can come up with as many options as you want, and then we'll come back and um, give you the information at the um, next meeting also. So, um, what we're asking, um, also asking you to do is take care, be liberal. These maps look beautiful, but take your um, markers, mark them up, put sticky notes on them of ones you want to move, split, um, and all those recommendations. Also, if you come up with um, any additional questions or information that you think would be helpful, write that down on your parking lot questions or add it to your opportunities analysis. Um, after about 15, 20 minutes, we'll come back together and we'll talk about uh, some of the changes that you've recommended.
Just want to just wanted to do a little time check. Um, if we can wrap up and try to write down all our uh, recommendations, uh, we're going to go and report out in about. Um, um, you can write them on the map. I mean, it, it's um, you can write them on the map. But when we do our report out, if you can just tell me what they are, I'll actually write them down too. That's that's fine. We'll we'll look at your maps. We'll take your maps down and all your stickies. Um, but uh, just about like two or three more minutes, and we're going to come back and do our report out and um, talk about those. Okay, if um, everybody is ready, I'd like to wrap up uh, this exercise and uh, if we can um, have someone report out some of the ideas you have for the recommendations you have for changes for your planning blocks or some observations, it can be even observations that you made. Um, we had, whoa, <laughs> we had um, one possible recommendation for the uh, planning blocks. We talked about splitting planning block 12. If you look, that's in um, the Baltimore Highland section um, off of McDowell Lane, I believe. Um, it currently has 85 students. Um, it's divided into two circles um, of housing. We talked about splitting that like down the middle so that one circle of housing was in one, one circle of housing was in the other to make that um, like a more manageable block to work with instead of trying to split, you know, or look at 85 students, you could look at 40. Um, that was the one, one recommendation we had. Thank you. And who would like to, okay. So after much discussion, <laughs> we actually came to the same conclusion that they did about splitting that planning block. Were there any other comments, concerns, questions about the planning blocks? Okay. So we will go back and look at your marked up maps and your comments and come back next time with uh, modifications. 
Uh, so uh, just real quick, a way the, when you're talking to the community and the public, um, here's some ways that they can stay informed and provide feedback. They can attend these committee meetings. They can attend the public information session on October 19th. Uh, they can watch the meetings on BCPS TV, uh, email their committee or their board members with input on the process. And they can take an online survey that will be launched. It's launched the same night as the public information session, and it runs about 10 days. And they can answer different questions about the options that you um, present at that public information session. And then they can attend the public hearing, uh, the board's public hearing, on December 6th. So the next meeting is September 2017. Uh, and, uh, two weeks uh, here again at Lansdowne, Elementary, or Lansdowne High School, and it's from 6 to 7.30. Um, and we thank you all for coming tonight, and we will see you next time.